One of the things being homeless and living in a homeless shelter for a while has taught me is the fact that I don't I don't need much to survive. I don't I don't need too much extra shit, right? I've essentially adopted minimalism by force. <laughs> and this is why you should implement some more of a minimalistic approach to your own personal life. So tap in. Been attached and I know in the end you just saw that I have you I swear to y'all some demons, y'all some demons She said that she loved me and she needed me Tore my heart a piece Wagwan bruv, bruvret, welcome back to another installment of Edutainment My goal on this channel is to make sure that you're entertained That you are laughing But most importantly that you are learning something that you can apply to your own personal life And make it better Hence the word edutainment, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we got another financial video for y'all that they're going to be reacting to but more so into the minimalism side of things right minimalism has been something that has been more mainstream or mainstreamized more has become popularized in society and it may be something that you've heard about but never really like thought too much about per se so we're gonna get into it no long talk no capping whatsoever minimalism and money the rarest financial advice never told. Mm, that's a very good title. Shout out to you, the inspired improvement for that title. That's a very good title. But no long talk, let's get into it. Beautiful intro. Minimalism. This has become quite the buzzword lately and it's a movement that is growing massively. The word minimalism gets tossed around in a variety of different expressions, so to simplify it for you guys, minimalism is, minimalism is really just the realization that as humans we have a tendency to acquire and accumulate and collect a lot of possessions, objects, furniture, clothing, random miscellaneous goods that really have no value, use, or importance to us, and we tend to keep them in our environment for very deep, unconscious, psychological, and emotional reasons. <laughs> This reminds me of all these like hoarder stories that I watch on like all these like TV networks. And as twins, Patty and Phyllis share a lot of similarities, <coughs> including a compulsion they've had for the past four decades. Their daily ritual is to go shopping and buy stuff. Like, bro, how do you have so much stuff in your house, and why is it not leaving it? Why? <laughs> I'm gonna just show you some clips. <laughs> I'm like, like, nigga, nigga, how did your house get to that level? What, what was going on? Your brain chemistry, brain makeup that made you just not take care of your shit and put stuff away, right? Like for me personally, when I was in the homeless shelter, I wore like the same clothes pretty much every day. I interchange it with maybe a, a second or third set of clothes and. I just go about my day. People are not checking for you like that when you think about it and it comes down to it. People are not, we don't really care about you like that as much as you think. <laughs> so just mind your business, do you think? Mind your business, that's all. Mind your business. If you gotta downsize your lifestyle a bit to pay some, because that's what, essentially what I did. I had a place I was renting, but I, I wanted to pay some debt quicker. So I just downsized. I would either stay at a homeless shelter for a while or stay, sleep on my friend's couch, but just so I could accelerate where I was financially, right? And you may have to go back to your mom's place. You may have to do some drastic measures to sell some shit, sell some stuff that you don't even use just to have more space in your house, right? Especially if you live in New York. I know your apartment, your units are very small, so you gotta maximize all this possible space. And minimalism is just the realization that humans do this and then the practice, the progressive practice of releasing and letting go of all the possessions that are not meaningful to us. The results are phenomenal and are crazy and they're well documented in a few very famous books. Um, the best probably is The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. It's the most famous at least. And the one that I read really recently was Goodbye Things by Fumio Sasaki. And those two books I recommend highly. I've been having the realization lately that minimalism, really, really anyone and everyone on this planet is a minimalist. And what I mean by that is even if this person is living in Western society in an oversized house with full of possessions, they're a minimalist in the sense that 
they only use, love, and truly value a very small percentage of the items that are in their possession. Mm. They just haven't put in the work yet to relieve themselves of anything that's not meaningful to them. And as well, when I'm looking at minimalism and its effect on my own life, I really put it as high on my list of amazing things as detoxification of the human body. Mm. And if you guys are familiar with my channel, you maybe know that when I was younger, when I was a teenager, I learned about detoxification and cleaning the body and using fruits and vegetables to do this. And I went on a high fruit diet. One of the other more natural things to like detox your body is to just implement intermittent fasting into your lifestyle. Intermittent fasting just to not be in a constant state of consuming, right? When you are constantly consuming, even for like social media, you're not your best self. You're not gonna, you feel depressed in a way because you're always comparing and looking at someone else's life. And when it applies to your body, you want to you know, push your first meal of the day to maybe 12 o'clock, three o'clock. For me, I do a bit more on the extreme side, 6 p.m. But just so you have, you give your body that time to go from periods of fasting and periods of eating. Like we think about it in prehistoric times, we did not always have food readily available. First, you had to like actually find the animals, hunt it, kill it, cook it. You go between periods of fasting, no periods of, of, of plenty, and periods of famine pretty much, right? And essentially the marketing, the consumerism in our society has made us think like breakfast is this holy grail that is a must have in life, right? What up y'all, it's DJ MV Angela Yee, show me though. Hey, watch out, bro. What's up? What's up with you, bro? Yo, what you doing? Yo, what you doing? Where the breakfast at? Are y'all trying to play me? Y'all ain't let my people up neither, bro. Where the breakfast at? Where the breakfast? Where the breakfast at? Breakfast? Like, for real, bro, y'all tripping. What's wrong with you? Where the breakfast at? Get him out of here, man. You don't need no breakfast at. You don't need no carbs. What you mean? Where the breakfast at? You don't need a diet. You don't need no breakfast. Get him out of here, but if you're not as active as you are when you were a kid and you're eating breakfast, lunch, dinner, plus snacks in between, you can apply minimalism principles to even like how you're eating, right? So that's just something to think about. For a long period of time, I'm still on it. And I was able to relieve myself of chronic acne um, and completely shift my self-esteem and my entire perception of the world. And I think that minimalism, honestly, is equally as powerful. And I've seen people get huge results and benefits from it, and I'm currently getting massive benefits from it. And today, what I want to talk to you guys about in this video is the financial aspect of minimalism. Mm. And the rarest financial advice that's never told. So really, since modern society has existed, even going back before that, humans have always compared themselves to those that have more, that have higher status, that have more money, that have more possessions. And there is a very consumeristic um, nature to our society of always pointing out lack, like you don't have enough, you need more, you're living in poverty, or you, you have to have more goods in order to be happier. You have to have more goods in a fancier apartment or a nicer car to impress the girl or the guy. Um, <laughs> And obviously this is crazy, but it really is a part of our society. And then on the other hand, you have the desire for financial freedom, for wealth. And that's an amazing, amazing goal to want to provide for yourself, to not have to rely on other people in old age and to live a beautiful life, to be able to travel. And the three com- There's nothing worse than being old and broke. Unless you're old, broke, and ugly. <laughs> but being old and broke, Holy, like life, all these people that work at Walmart, I honestly, I hope, I pray and hope, like all the old people that work at Walmart, I pray and hope that it's because they don't want to be in the house all day, all day or don't, they don't want to be inside the whole time. And they actually go there perhaps because they just want something to do. But oftentimes, based on like some documentaries I've seen, it's like, it's because they still, they still need that job. Like literally not need, not want that job, right? So. Being old and old and broke, not the wave. Just build up your emergency fund, thousand dollars, and then once you pay some debt, build it up again to at least to cover expenses from three to six months or even a year, just so you have a, always have always have something in the bank to keep you from any like drastic emergency that might come up. There's nothing worse than having an emergency, and then you can't pay for it. And then you have to ask a friend to borrow money from them. And now that relationship with that friend might be on a shaky ground because, you know, they're obviously going to be going to ask for the money back and you may not have the funds or the means to pay them back or worse yet, even take out a loan to pay for that emergency. 
yeah and the best way to save is to just put minimum 20 percent of your income whatever you get or if you can put more or at least put something into your savings account each paycheck that you get and methods that are touted for accumulating wealth are to one to earn more money so to have more money coming in two to spend less money to be more frugal to have less going out and then three to invest the money that you've earned into assets that provide cash flow and Appreciate expand value. over time so to make investments but there's a fourth method that is never really talked about it's starting to come out a bit more but it's this crazy thing that occurs when you let go of everything that you do that you don't need physically in your possession strangely enough you realize that you have everything that you do need mm. by undergoing the practice of minimalism we somehow we relieve ourselves of desire and i think that the greatest financial advice that's never told is that if you want to become rich quick if you want to feel fulfilled and happy to release yourself from desire to relieve and surrender desire from you the desire for more then you realize that you have everything that you need and you feel fulfilled you feel rich and I did another video on how to get rich quick, actually, and my two main methods were that and also to become grateful for what you already have, but also really to define for yourself what being rich actually feels like. Mm -hmm. And when I did this for myself, I was blown away with the fact that every activity and experience that makes me feel truly rich is either free or has very little to do with money because like it's very low cost. It's really, it has nothing to do with money. There might be money involved in some of it, like buying super healthy food and eating a bowl of pomegranates. But it's really not about the money and really anyone with any kind of financial situation can engage in activities that make them feel rich. And I think that getting out of the matrix, giving away your things, releasing yourself from objects is really the way to feel truly rich, but also to be like literally financially rich is to do this as well. And there's a million ways that minimalism gives you more money, obviously by selling your goods, which I've been doing a lot of lately. But as well, when you own less, you have much less of a desire for more. Shit. Less really is more. There's nothing worse than having a, a messy room. You know what I'm saying? It just it just makes you feel uneasy. I'm not sure about y'all, but for me, having a messy like workspace or a messy room just makes you feel like yucky. It's like, <clears throat> right? And the more stuff you have, typically, the, the more you have to constantly be <laughs> um, cleaning up, right? You know those ones where you do laundry, you have so many, so much clothes that the laundry just, once you've done it and you washed it, the laundry just sits on uh, on your chair or your couch for a while. <laughs> where the laundry just, you st it stays there for like a week at one point. <laughs> but nah, fashion is cool and all. I have like your set pair of clothes that are main staples in your, in your life and just interchange it periodically. You actually don't need that much stuff. Being homeless has taught me like, yo, I have, you just, the, the less money you have, honestly, the more innovative you, you are, right? I used to like go to the gym. I used to think I had to go to the gym to maintain my shape. Now I just do body weight workouts, at home workouts, and I try not to be too sedentary throughout my day when I'm working, right? So every hour, hour and a half, I just walk up the stairs to the building or just do some push-ups just to not be so like sitting, right? So it's just something to think about. Apply minimalism into your financial life, your health-wise, like intermittent fasting, just some stuff to ponder upon, you know what I'm saying? But yo, God bless, much love, peace and joy, namaste. Always remember, if it doesn't feed you, whatever you're watching, whatever you're listening to, whatever you're eating, because our diet is more than just what we eat. If it doesn't feed you, don't water it. And always remember as well, too much or any good thing is good for nothing. I will see y'all on the next installment of edutainment. Deuces. Lately I've been feeling like a clown cause I get too much of my own energy to people that don't really give a fuck. I swear that's why I stay up in my room and I'll leave my pad and I don't trust a soul cause this music shit is all I have.